In this episode of Unboxing with a Rocket Scientist, we're going to take a look at the Estes Super Big Bertha Rocket Kit. There are many unboxing videos for model rockets, but wouldn't you like a real rocket scientist's opinion of the materials and parts in the kit? Today you'll actually find out the inside information, so that you know what to look for when you get a rocket kit. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan, and yes, I am a rocket scientist. Today we're going to unbox the Estes Super Big Bertha and see what's inside. So let's get a little strip of tape right there. I'm going to cut that open. This is the first time that I've seen this rocket as well. Um, looking at the box, um, this says it's a length of 36.8 inches, a diameter of 2.6 inches, and uses parachute recovery. Um, it is, flies on, uh, to 1100 feet on an F-16-6, or you could use an E-16-4. You can also use Aerotech or Cesaroni motors. Um, those are both 29 millimeter diameter motors, so that's what this kit is. We'd classify it as a mid-power kit. So when we open it up, the first thing we see are two, um, tubes and these are BT80 size and I'm just trying to get how long they are. Um, they're not 18 inches, they're, they're 36 centimeters, is that right? Yeah, um, so like 14 or 15 inches long. Um, they use a brown tube and I'm not sure why they use brown, we use white um, and the reason we use white is so when you draw lines down it for like putting your fins on or launch lugs, you can see the lines a little bit better. Um, brown is a little bit cheaper, I assume, which is why Estes might went with it. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, opening it up, first thing we have are two uh, packs of balsa wood. And this is a lot of balsa wood. So let me get my razor blade and open these up and see what's inside. So the first one, I know this rocket has four fins and there's a lot more sheets than four in here. There's two, four, six, is that seven? Three, six, no, eight sheets of, this looks to be like, um, um, not, not, um, <laughs> let's see, a 16th inch. <laughs> I was thinking 330 seconds, but this is a 16th. Um, so what I'm thinking here is that they're going to laminate a whole bunch of sheets together to make up a really thick fin. Uh, so there, those are all the same in that one. Now this wood in here is a little bit thicker. So this is an eighth of an inch. And this is half of that, so that's a sixteenth. So what it looks like, and if you look at these, um, you got a pattern for your fin, but then you have little um, triangles that are punched out. Um, these are called lightning holes, and it's to lighten, to make lighter weight, the rocket. Um, so these are lightning holes. Um, so that the fins are actually hollow on the inside and then it will have this skin on the outside. And looking at this, it does have a through the wall fin tab, but I'm not seeing slots on my tube. So there might be more in here that I'm, that I'm not seeing. So there's one, two, three, four of those, and then eight of these, so one for each side. Let's see what else is in here. All right, we have centering rings. And again, um, these have slots in them um, for the fin through the wall fin slots. Um, and then two rings that don't have slots in them. And these are made out of cardboard. And that looks to be like about 0.05 inches thick cardboard. Um, and again, it's got a 29 millimeter engine mount tube. So here's our instructions. And, okay, here we go. So in the instructions, they get a pattern right here, and that pattern is to 
cut out the fin slots. So it's a you cut them <laughs> type of kit. So that makes it a little bit harder to do. So um, Estes calls this a pro series, but usually they all put a skill level on it. I would put this at um, probably skill level four because of this. You have to slot those tubes yourself. And it's not quite as easy as you'd think it is. Um, it takes a really steady hand to do it. Um, but other than that, they, they show you how. The instructions are pretty well illustrated. There are six sheets, you know, you know two, four, six sheets of paper here, but all one long. Um, yeah, but typically Estes does a really good job on their instructions, so I think you're going to like that. Um, I can see here that they are calling for the use of epoxy, and that's for the engine retainer, because that's plastic. But everywhere else, it looks like they're just using regular wood glue for everything. Um, and instead of epoxy, you might get away with super glue um, instead of epoxy. I've glued those um, retainers on and they usually glue just fine. Um, and then here we have a water slide decal. So you'll cut these out, the patterns, and then soak them in water and then they, they float off and it's a really thin acetate. And then you just slide it right onto your rocket. The nice thing about them is that they're very thin so you don't get a shadow when you're looking at it in the bright sunlight. Um, that edge just almost blends in perfect. The downside is that they are a little bit um, fragile. So you have to be very careful in using them. Um, this little sheet of paper is a protectant um, just to cover that up so it doesn't get all scratched in the, in the kit in, when it's shipping. Okay, so that's the rest of the box. Uh, we have our engine mount tube. This is a thick wall tube. That's nice because it's going to be 29 millimeter motors. We have a vacuform, or not, not vacuform, blow molded nose cone. Um, and this is a BT-80 size. And that's a really nice fit. I like that. Um, so that's that. Uh, we got a paper tube coupler because we're going to join those two tubes together, make a longer tube. Let's check the fit on that. Oh yeah, that's a good fit too. So that's nice. Um, and then in here, we got all of our smaller parts. So let's take a look at that. Does it tell me how big the parachute is? I don't want to open it up if I don't have to. Okay, so these are your launch lugs and these are paper. They're one inch long, so they're going to be glued. You're going to draw a line down the entire length of the rocket and then you're going to glue them on. Um, just be careful getting them, make, make sure they're nice and straight so they're concentric. Uh, because if, if one is crooked this way, one's crooked that way, then the launch rod will never go through. And that's a quarter inch launch rod, so this is going to be off of a mid-power pad. Um, that is a giant um, shock cord anchor. Um, this is your shock cord. Um, I don't know if you need it like that huge. Um, this is for like people that are like, really visually impaired because <laughs> um, you know look how, how wide this is compared you're going to take this and you're going to put glue on it and then fold it in half a couple of times um, and that's like it's going to be really strong because it's so big um, and there this is the shock cord and this is um, just rubber um, kind of elastic um, Estes always uses that on their kits that should work fine for you uh, this right here is the warranty card, and it also includes uh, some charts like uh, launch site dimensions. So this is going to be launching on E's and F motors, and so you're going to need a launch site that it's at least a thousand feet on a side. Um, the higher the rocket goes, the further it can drift. So you'll probably want a fairly good sized field. And then finally, nope, not finally, we got two pieces left. Uh, we have our plastic parachute. And I can see that the lines on this parachute are already pre-tied. So that's nice. So you don't have to do that yourself. Um, and this kind of looks, I'm guessing, like a 24-inch parachute. 
Yeah, that's a 24 inch diameter parachute. So it's nice and bright and big and colorful. Let's see uh, how they did their lines. So we got one there. Oh, good. They did it. They did it the right way. Good, good, good. Um, you see, they got the middle line goes crisscross because normally when you build a parachute in the old style, you'd go from corner to corner. So this corner, that corner, and then this corner to this corner, and then finally this corner to this corner. But the new way of doing it is um, do corner to corner on the outside, but then then the one in the middle go across. And the reason for that is when you pick up all the shroud lines, they'll all lay flat across your hand like that. Um, so you don't have one that's twisted because that little twist will kind of cause your rocket to rotate and spin as it's coming down, which is a greater chance of, you know, tangling things. So that's the parachute. That looks pretty good. And then finally, we have a plastic engine retainer. This is a screw on retainer. So the part that gets bonded to the rocket is right here. And this is where they call for epoxy, uh, but you can use super glue. I would just use medium or extra thick super glue, put some in there, put it on there, wipe it out, and then you're good to go. If, a, if you use epoxy, you gotta wait for the epoxy to harden. Um, and then you'll drop your motor in and then screw it on with the cap and that locks it in place. Um, but you will have to, if you're using the Estes motors, and I'm sure they'll say this in the instructions, is yeah, right here on the, on the install engine. Um, you'll take your rocket engine and you'll wrap tape around the back end to build up a, some thickness on the back end so that when you slide it into the tube, it doesn't just drop all the way through. So it'll kind of catch and that prevents it from going forward. And then when you put the, the retainer cap on, that locks it in place so that it can't come backwards either. So the tape keeps it going from forward and the cap keeps it from going backwards and that locks your rocket engine. All right, so this is a pretty basic kit with the exception of putting in or cutting in the slots for the fins. I would call it a skill level three, but this one step of putting slots in it's a little bit tricky, you know, you wanna make sure that um, they're nice and straight and they're, they're spaced right. Um, and then you also have to laminate your fins together. Um, and you gotta be careful of doing that too, because um, if you use too much wood glue, and I, let me see if they call for wood glue on that. Um, actually, they call for super glue. They call for CA glue. I don't know if you can see that right here. But in step uh, one or step four, um, they call for CA glue. So, that's cyanoacrylate, which is the chemical name for super glue. Um, yeah, so that's, I would recommend super glue on that too. I wouldn't use wood glue on that because you're gonna, wood glue adds a lot of moisture um, and then when you're laminating the skins on, all that moisture in there is gonna make your, your wood warp. But super glue doesn't have any moisture in it, so that will keep them nice and flat. And that's what you're gonna want when you build this rocket. So I gave you a few tips on building this as well. So this is the Estes Super Big Bertha Rocket Kit. You've been watching Unboxing with a Rocket Scientist. My name again was Tim Van Milligan.